Hello, my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, where we unlock the power of ServiceNow. Okay, just want to uh, thank everyone for subscribing. Um, we have 157 so far, We're trying to get 1,000 by next month, so it might be a little bit of a lofty expectation, um, or goal for that matter, uh, but I think it's, uh, it's accomplishable sometime in the near future. Uh, just updated a uh, video here, personalizing forms in Kingston. I'm going to build on this a little bit. Also, one thing I wanted to mention was that I did create a video for About Me and how to contact me, so that way I can shorten the uh, length of the videos. So, today, uh, responding to a comment from Kim Frick, Kim asks basically about form designer, uh, flow designer, how the, the, the person that is new to the organization who just started using ServiceNow, how they would approach uh, putting uh, forms together um, from an admin and non-admin perspective. So Kim, uh, one thing I wanted to tell you is that for form configuration, there is a video by ServiceNow, so did a little bit of research and found this. So you might want to have them watch this. Did a little bit more research, and I just wanted to find out like what is kind of cool um, and something that we could put to use. So I came up with the process flow formatter. You might be familiar with this in that it's at the very top of the change management application or in, in the change management form. Uh, you'll see these little chevrons here and this symbolizes each stage. Uh, so to make it a little bit prettier, I'll show you an actual change request here. And then as you go through each stage, there'll be these check marks here until it gets to closed or canceled for this one. So uh, that being said, what do you need to do? Okay, well, we'll go back here to the process flow formatter instructions and we have to activate the plugin. So I'm gonna show you where to activate the plugin. We go to plugins, which I've demonstrated in some of the other videos. And then I just did uh, star floor, flow underscore for, formatter and the process flow formatter came up. It is active. I'll show you what it looks like right here. And then you would click on activate slash upgrade. I did this also for incident alert management, so you can refer to, to that to um, see how the, the plugin responds. But basically, if you click on the UI action, there'll be a uh, screen that pops up. In this case, it says upgrade. Um, we won't go through the motions here, just to save on time. So then the next thing you want to do is uh, go to the system UI process flow module right here. So under system UI process flow, I just typed an S space flow right here in the filter and I created these three. So I've already searched for them. And I'm going to show you each one of the three that I created. And I created one called new, one called solution, and one called end. And I created it on the incident, out, or excuse me, the outage form, uh, just because I believe that uh, from previous experience um, that when you're in the middle of an outage, you kind of want to know where you are in the process at a high level if you're a, a support desk manager, for example. So let's look at the first stage right here for the uh, flow formatter. Uh, the table here is outage, uh, and then I just named it incident outage new state. And I piggybacked off of one of the change ones. And then I create a condition here. So this goes, um, I, I've demonstrated the condition builder in a couple other videos. So if you watch the SLA videos, you'll see that uh, the condition builder is very powerful and you can dot walk uh, to different, uh, different tables um, from this, this core table here. So I just said begin is not, empty, is not empty because begin is one of the fields on the form. And then what I did was task number dot incident dot a field that I created, which is called solution communicated to clients, um, is not yes. And I'll just show you the dot walk real quick. So you want to show related fields. And then we're going to go to task. And then make sure that you click on the one with the arrow here. And then we're going to find incident. And now you're going to see this little plus sign here, right? So you're going to click on this. And then also look at what else pops up. Incident alert task. Uh, remember an in incident alert management, I talked about these. So you could potentially um, map to an alert task. It's just up to you or your organization. Um, and depending on whatever the requirements are, you just map to these fields. So then I'm gonna do the incident with a plus sign. And now we can go and find 
solution communicated to client. So that's our dot walk right there. I'm going to get rid of it and just keep this as is. And then we can, and one thing I wanted to point out also, if your order is 100, uh, just like you would create fields or variables, you do them in increments of 100 generally, and that's just in case you make a mistake later with the stages. So next thing we have um, here, I just call it solution, um, because I feel like when you're in the middle of an outage, you want to, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, basically formulate that solution. You might have a conference call. I'm not sure what your organization um, does in terms of their SOPs, but um, definitely a solution needs to be formulated and then um, implemented. So you'll notice here, same dot walk. It needs to be yes on the incident form. And then the end uh, field is empty. So that's, got, that's key right there for 200. And then when we go to our next one, which is the end state, end is our label, our order will be 300. And I'm going to show you in just a second how all this looks on the, the outage form. So end is not empty, which is the inverse of what we had previous to this. And then this solution communicated to client needs to be yes. Okay, so next, uh, let's see here. I believe this is a copy of the same one. Yeah, this is the same thing as this one. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And then what I did was I went to configure the outage form. So Kim, this is something you asked about, how you configure um, the forms. And basically the way you would do that is you could right click here, go to configure, and I did form layout. And when you do form layout, that's going to bring up this screen right here. The drag and drop is going to be for when you click on form design. I found that when I was experimenting with it, that form layout was a better approach for making the changes stick. You could also access that configure form layout or design from the hamburger menu right here. So see here, form design, form layout. This is the, these are the stages here, the three stages that I talked about. So new, solution, and pretty simple. So I created an incident, um, and then down here I have a related list. I also have a video on uh, related lists, so you, you can reference that one to, uh, to create an outage related list here at the bottom of the form. And then you'll see here, uh, this is our uh, outage, which, is, uh, which we've created. So now going back to the outage, uh, we're going to want to initiate the new stage. And remember our condition was, had begin in it. So let's just reference this, Oops. this one right here. So begin is not empty, so it needs to be populated. And then the solution communicated on this form here needs to be no, so or is not yes. So at this point, I'm going to click on the related link. Uh, it's going to load our incidents list. So I'm going to have to go back to the outage now, which is fine. My apologies for that. I could also access the outage if I wanted to um, by clicking on this little eye right here, and then I could do open record. But I want to keep this incident open for right now in a separate window. Okay, so let's go number 528. <clears throat> and then you'll see right here the blue highlight or blue line underneath the word new. Okay, so we're in the new stage. So if our incident manager um, our support desk manager were to come into the application, they would know, okay, we're, we're in, in, and they wouldn't have to scroll all the way down to see begin, um, even though this form isn't uh, very heavy or lengthy, um, it's still good to be able to see this at a high level. So now, we're going to communicate the solution to the client. So we're saying here, basically, uh, the solution's in place, and we've communicated it. And now we'll refresh this form. Now you see here we have a little check for our new, and now we have a solution in place, and now we're going to end this. So we're going to say that we've already implemented it, and as a little exercise for yourself, or maybe a little bit of homework, maybe you want to put in another stage between these two that says in, uh, implemented solution. So you can basically follow along um, or recreate the, the stages here, and maybe add an extra one if you'd like. So now I'm going to end the outage. And I'm just going to load the list. So let's go back into it. And we'll see here, nice little check mark. Okay, 
Uh, looks like we added that and uh, it's complete now. So you've seen how to configure it and you've seen it go through all the stages. I'm Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and you've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow. Thank you and have a great day.